The Fairchild Republic A10 Thunderbolt II is a single-seat, twin-turbofan engine, straight-wing jet aircraft developed by Fairchild Republic for the United States Air Force, or USAF. It is commonly referred to by the nicknames Warthog or Hog, although the A-10's official name comes from the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, a World War II fighter-bomber effective at attacking ground targets. The A-10 was intended to improve on the performance and firepower of the A-1 Sky Raider. The A-10 was designed around the 30mm GAU-8 Avenger rotary cannon. Its airframe was designed for durability with measures such as 1,200 pounds or 540 kilograms of titanium armor to protect the cockpit and aircraft systems, enabling it to absorb damage and continue flying. Its ability to take off and land from relatively short runways permits operation from airstrips close to the front lines and its simple design enables maintenance with minimal facilities. A-10 Thunderbolt II began development during the Vietnam War, when U.S. Air Force losses called for a new warplane to help attack enemy ground forces. The problem was that after World War II, the military began to focus on nuclear devices and aircraft capable of delivering those weapons. As a result, planes with conventional weaponry fell to the wayside until after the Vietnam War. Air Force requests for an aircraft with low-speed maneuverability, vicious firepower, and ruggedness began in 1966. After modified requests specified that a 30mm cannon should be attached as well as other specifications like speed and takeoff distance, the A-10 finally took its first flight in 1972. Five years later, the A-10 was officially picked for use by the United States Air Force. The A-10 fit the bill for the mission, boasting superior maneuvering at low speeds and a short takeoff. This was possible because of its expansive wing area and ailerons, a hinged flight control surface. A-10s aren't just for daytime operations either. Each craft is outfitted with night vision for strafes in the dark. Continuous upgrades since its inception, like modern navigational systems, have kept this warplane a favorite of the military and citizens alike. It's also pretty easy to repair because parts are trivial to swap out. These mechanisms and abilities made the Warthog ideal for close air support whether the targets were personnel or vehicles. In addition, the A-10 came with a satisfying and brutally effective weapons system. The most famous armament would be the 30mm GAU-8 cannon. The iconic sound many think of when talking about this plane is the result of this weapon. The GAU-8 has a range of over 12,000 feet and fires at an astounding 3,900 rounds per minute. This cannon has such a high velocity that targets never even hear the gunfire, even though the gun can put basketball-sized holes in vehicles after a strafe. The A-10 also comes equipped with MK-82 bombs that are dropped right on top of targets. Finally, the Warthog can also be equipped with incendiary devices, mine-dropping capabilities, and a myriad of other conventional munitions. Despite its cult following, many defense leaders are looking to replace the aging A-10 with the highly advanced F-35 Lightning II stealth fighter jet. This appears to be the plan, even though each F-35 is quite a bit more expensive than the A-10. For now, the Air Force expects the powerful but old A-10 Thunderbolt II to be in service until 2028. Other aircraft, such as drones, were proposed to replace the A-10, but neither the F-35 nor the Reaper drone can match the Warthog's firepower. As it stands, the A-10 will remain the close air support aircraft of choice for the United States, at least for now in the short run. The Thunderbolt II's story starts with America's experience in Vietnam. The United States had a fleet of expensive, multi-purpose jets like the F-105 Thunder Chief and F-4 Phantom. But over the jungles of that conflict, those fancier warplanes ceded much of the close air support mission to simple, propeller-driven aircraft like the Korean War-era A-1 Sky Raider and to Army helicopters. 
Such aircraft could more easily maneuver at low altitudes and had the range and loitering time to do air support for infantry operations. By the 1970s, the Pentagon had learned its lesson. The AX program, which sought a new attack aircraft, asked for something that could complete that kind of mission, but was much harder to shoot down and could survive shots from anti-armor weaponry. Fairchild's A-10 went up against the Northrop YA-9A, which also employed a twin-engine straight-wing configuration, but its wing root mounted engines and single tail were considered more vulnerable. In 1972, the Air Force picked the Warthog. What America got with the A-10 was a single-seat, low-wing, straight-wing aircraft with two non-afterburning turbofan engines mounted high, behind the wing and in front of an empennage with twin vertical stabilizers. The plane carries 10,000 pounds of internal fuel near the wing roots. In later years, people would say the A-10 was a plane designed around a gun. It's 30mm GAU-8 Avenger rotary cannon to be specific. But the design logic dictating its configuration goes well beyond that mean machine gun in its nose. The A-10's large, unswept, high aspect ratio wing and large ailerons give it excellent low speed, low altitude maneuverability. The wing also allows short takeoffs and landings. That's handy because this plane frequently needs to operate from primitive forward airfields near the front lines. The wing skin isn't load-bearing, so damaged skin sections can be replaced easily in the field and with makeshift materials if necessary. The A-10's cockpit and portions of its flight control system are protected by 1,200 pounds of titanium aircraft armor called the bathtub. The bathtub can withstand direct hits from armor-piercing projectiles up to 23 millimeters. The front windscreen and canopy are resistant to small arms fire. This protection combines with double redundant hydraulic flight systems and a mechanical system that still works even if hydraulics are lost. The armor and redundancy has allowed pilots to safely return with big time battle damage, like in 2003 when Captain Kim Campbell successfully brought her Warthog back from a close air support mission near Baghdad. Her 75th Fighter Squadron A-10 was hit by ground fire, taking extensive damage to the starboard vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, aft fuselage, and engine. Upon sustaining the hit, the airplane became uncontrollable, rolling left, nose down. After trying several ways to regain control, she engaged the backup mechanical flight control system. The jet responded, and with some help from her wingman, she landed back at her forward base. Whether you're talking about a sophisticated stealth bomber or flying machine gun, it's never easy to bring a new warplane into being. How the A-10 program survived its first few years is a complicated story. Former A-10 pilot and author Colonel Arden B. Dahl, retired, contends that the Thunderbolt II made it to production by prevailing in two key political battles. Having survived the halls of power, the A-10 would soon prove its critics wrong with its survival skills on the battlefield. No, the Warthog isn't fast, not by a long shot. Pilots say it has three practical throttle settings, full throttle, 50%, and off. And when the plane came out, its detractors cited its 450 mile per hour top speed as a detriment to its survivability. But in its decades of service, the Warthog has yet to operate in an environment where the US has not enjoyed air superiority, largely negating that disadvantage. Here's the other good thing about a relatively simple aircraft. It's adaptable. Because the A-10 was designed for austere bases with limited facilities, many of the aircraft's parts are interchangeable, including the engines, main landing gear, and vertical stabilizers. A wide range of armament has been adapted to the A-10, which carries conventional munitions on 11 wing stations, including general purpose bombs, cluster bomb units, laser guided bombs, Joint Direct Attack Munitions, or JDAM, Wind Corrected Munitions Dispenser, or WCMD, AGM-65 Maverick, and AIM-9 Sidewinder Missiles, 2.75-inch rockets, and Illumination Flares. The Air Force has argued that it cannot afford the A-10, and that the trusty old hog must be retired in part to pay for acquisition of the F-35, 
which will assume its close air support mission among all the other things the Joint Strike Fighter is supposed to do. Critics and the A-10's congressional supporters have sternly challenged the notion, leading to a tense, pitched battle. In January of this year, for example, Major General James Post, Vice Commander of Air Combat Command, reportedly told junior officers that passing favorable information about the A-10 to Congress was tantamount to committing treason. More recently, F-35 Program Chief Lt. Gen. Christopher Bogdan dismissed a potential close air support fly-off test between the A-10 and F-35 as unnecessary. How little things change. Forty years later, some Air Force leaders still see the A-10 as too rudimentary for the battlefield of the future, preferring in this case the supposedly do-it-all F-35. In fact, the A-10 is now expected to fly well into the 2040s, though its role could change from tank killer to insurgent menace. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.